So today I wanted to give everyone a tour and show the difference between the drum kit in the room with acoustic panels and without acoustic panels to show how much you can improve your space by just putting a few uh, panels at strategic locations to remove those early reflections. So here's a small tour of my room, doors just behind me, some wardrobes on the right, a little couch, drum kit in the corner there, large window, and desk on this side. So what I wanted to do with this room is create some panels to put at the closest reflection points next to the hi-hat behind the drum kit, stop those reflections coming off the Jiprock here and the windows, um, which were splashing back into the microphones and uh, really impacting the amount of small room sound entering the microphones. So the panels themselves, their dimensions are 60 centimeters wide, 120 centimeters tall, and 88 centimeters thick, which is the standard thickness of the insulation from the hardware store. Um, it's just standard glass wool insulation, relatively soft, um, not rigid, uh, and has a flow resistivity rating of about 10,000, which is ideal for this purpose. Um, they should absorb down to about 150 hertz based on my calculations. The frames are made of plywood and I just wrapped them in a cotton fabric to make sure that the fibers don't escape. I'll chuck some pictures up of the build process so you guys know what they kind of look like on the inside. Before we get into the playing, just for those of you who are interested in the recording setup, I've got an RE20 on the outside of the kick. Um, typically I put the kick mic in the hole for a more rock punchy tone and outside the hole for a more softer pop type tone. Um, obviously more towards the outside it will be a bit ringier and boomier. Towards the center it'll be tighter and punchier so I've got a nice balance happening there. Um, overheads I've got a couple of AT 4040s quite close to the drum kit that uh, just helps reduce the number of reflections that they capture and tighten up the sound as much as possible in this kind of modified recorderman slash overhead pattern. It works quite well. The mics are equally spaced from the snare to make sure that they're in phase. And then my trusty old SM57 on the snare there. And these are all running into my trusty UFX2, which is pretty brand new. I got it a couple of weeks ago, so it's my Christmas present to myself. Sweet, so let's get right into the testing and see what you guys think. So to wrap up this test, my personal opinion on the difference is the panels certainly improve the sound a fair bit. I think the drum transients are sharper, so the drums sound more punchy. The imaging is better, um, so you can hear the cymbals and the drums across from left to right in the overheads much better. Um, and there's a lot less bleed in the kick mic and the snare mic, and all those facts come together to make a much cleaner sounding mix. So overall, I'm pretty happy, um, but I'm keen to hear all of your opinions in the comments below. Cheers.